In this video, we're going to complete example one. We're going to expand and simplify the following expressions. So we'll start with question A. We're going to multiply the 7x by the 3 and also by the 10x. What is 7x times 3? Well, 7 times 3 is 21. So we're going to get 21x. And then what is 7x times 10x? Well, 7 times 10 is 70. And you'll notice we've got two x's here. We've got an x here at the 7x, and we've got an x here at the 10x. So when you have two x's, you need to write it as x squared. The two is basically saying that there are two of the x's. And we're going to put a plus between these two terms. So that's question A expanded. We can't do any more to that. We can't simplify it. Let's now move on to question B. You'll notice that we have negative 3 at the beginning of the brackets. So we need to multiply negative 3 by the A and also by this 10 here. Notice that the 4a is outside the brackets, so we're not multiplying negative 3 by 4a. Okay, what is negative 3 times a? Well, we're going to get negative 3a. Next, we're going to multiply the negative 3 by the 10. And this is where things can get confusing for people. This is where people can start making mistakes. The reason for this is you'll see we've got a minus sign here and we multiply negative 3 by a number that has a minus sign to the left of it. And the easiest way to get around this is just to go negative 3 times negative 10. So let's treat this as negative 10 because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So 3 times 10 is 30 and because they were both negative we're going to get positive 30. So we're going to write this as plus 30. Okay, and a lot of people get this wrong because they assume that if there's a minus sign up here, there must also be a minus sign down here. But with the double negative, we've got to change it to the plus symbol. Also, we had plus 4a at the end, so we're just going to copy that down. Plus 4a. So we've done the first part here, we've expanded our expression. We also need to check if we can simplify anything, and we can because negative 3a plus 4a can be simplified. If I have negative 3a's and add another 4a's, I end up with just 1a. All right, you'll notice that we've got our plus 30 here. So I'm just going to write that to the right here, plus 30. And I'm going to rewrite it again because I don't like to have a 1 in front of my a. I'm going to write it as a plus 30. Let's now move on to question C. You'll see that this time we have two sets of brackets. We'll focus on the first set. We're going to multiply 2b by 3. And we're also going to multiply 2b by 6c. 2b times 3 will give us 6b. And then 2b times 6c, 2 times 6 is 12. And because we've got the b and the c, we write bc. We're going to put a plus between them. Let's now look at the second set of brackets. We've got minus b times 2c and minus b times minus 1. We really need to remember that this is not just b, it's minus b. So if I have minus b and I times it by 2c, you'll notice that we've only got one number here. We've got the 2. So I'm just going to write the 2 down. And we also had a b and a c, so I'm going to write it as 2bc. And I need to put a minus sign at the front of it. Next, I'm doing minus b times minus 1. Now b times 1 is just 1b or b, but because I had these two minus signs here, I end up with the plus symbol. So we get plus b. We also need to simplify this expression. We're looking for terms with the exact same set of pronumerals. Here we've got 6b. These two in the middle have b and c, and the one at the end 
has a B. So 6B plus B or plus 1B gives us 7B. And in the middle we've got 12BC minus 2BC which gives us 10BC which is also a positive so we put the plus sign here. Let's now move on to question D. Once again we've got two sets of brackets so the X is going to be multiplied by the 3Y and also multiplied by let's treat this as negative 1 or minus 1. So x times 3y gives us, we've only got one number here, which is the 3. And because of the x and the y, we're just going to write it as 3xy. Remembering we're treating this as negative 1 or minus 1. So what's x times minus 1? Well, x times 1 is just x, or 1x, but we'll just write it as x. And we're going to put the minus sign in front of that. Now looking at the next set of brackets, this is something that can really confuse people and a way to get around that is to look at this minus symbol here and, and treat it as negative 1. I'm actually going to write a 1 here. And you might remember that when there's no number there, there's technically a 1. So we're going to multiply negative 1 or minus 1 by x and we're also going to multiply minus 1 by minus 7. And that's going to make sure we're not going to make a mistake here. So minus 1 times x is minus 1x, or just minus x. And minus 1 times minus 7 actually gives us a positive 7. So we'll write this as plus 7. Okay. We also want to simplify our expression. Uh, you can see here we've got xy. In the middle we've got just x. And at the end just a number. We can only combine terms with the exact same set of pronumerals, which is just the two terms in the middle, they both have just an x. This is minus 1x minus 1x, and that will give us minus 2x. So we'll write this as 3xy minus 2x plus 7. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.